All right. Um, I used, was a spin fisherman right up until just five years ago when I got one of these and fell in love with them. You know, fantastic fishing poles. I use it for everything. Um, as far as fluke go, my favorite rig is one of these. All right. For the rocky bottom that we seem to be in most of the time. You know, it'll lay like this and in a current, it'll be close to the bottom. Nine times out of ten, they'll hit the top rig. Because if you look at the fluke, they're laying on the bottom and they're looking up. So they'll ambush the prey on the top hook sometimes, almost all the time. And I usually put just a piece of gulp on here, some squid and a spearing. All right, now, usually a lot of times I'm just holding the pole like this, watching the tip. And you'll see the little fish will be hitting the tip. You'll be just hitting it. You'll feel the little nibbles, and then all of a sudden you're just wa you're watching the tip more than anything else. And all of a sudden the, it, the nibbling stops and it just bends like this, like you think you're on the bottom. Let it go down a little bit until you feel it pull another time, and then set the hook. And hopefully you set it good enough. You know, you don't have to go wild. I watch people like they're swinging a golf club up over their head, you know. And uh, just usually just a short jerk up like this, and then if you really have a fish in it, you can set it again. All right, now, as far as colors to use, what rigs to use, you want to bring a variety of things. Get your tackle bag together, try to get it organized, not a disaster like this is right phone? now. And uh, Thank you. watch the boat, watch what everybody else is doing. Hopefully everybody's doing something a little different and you see who is catching the best and the most. And then try to switch to whatever color they are. You know, if you're on a six pack, usually everybody's friendly and nice and they're willing to give advice. If you're on a big charter boat and there's a pool, forget it, you're on your own. You know, most of the times I couldn't even beg a piece of gulp from somebody at one point just to catch a fish, which was crazy. So, um, effect, cost effective is one of the things I wanted to talk about. If you have a rig, let's say you're fishing something like this with a spro on the bottom. Everybody loves the spros. With a hook on the bottom and another hook up top. That rig's going to cost you $15 if you, if you put gulp on it and everything else. Now you're talking $17, $18 a rig. Okay? This is five bucks. I lose one of these, it's not going to kill me. I watched a guy fishing the corner right next to me one day. Lost ten rigs like that to one that I lost. No. <laughs> so he burned through almost $200 worth of tackle in that day, and I lost ten bucks. And that was it. So, um, what, why? What was the difference? Well, this is these are just smiling bobs. You know, they're two dollars a piece in a lot of tackle shops. They're only like uh, a half, uh, one ounce maybe. And the the sinker and the rest of the stuff, you know, five dollars, six dollars for the whole rig. He was using the spros. A four ounce spro is over ten bucks. A two ounce up top is maybe five. So there's 15 right there. Add the gulp and everything else. And you're talking close to, you know, well over 15 to $18 a rig. And if you keep snapping them off in the rocks because what you have on the bottom has a hook on it, you're almost, like Kenny said, Bob said, you're guaranteed to hook the bottom. Anything with a hook on the bottom, forget it. As long, uh, unless you're in a sandy bottom. Then you can use something, you know, the traditional ones with the three-way, the three-way hook, the sinker right on the bottom, and this dragged out behind it. Sorry, it's a mess. 
You know, so it's dragging right on the sand. All right, that'll work up in the Nantucket Shoals all day long. Okay, and they'll pounce on that, and then you got to let them eat it. You can't just set the hook. All right, one of my favorite spoon jigs is one I came up with. Kenny's, I saw he had one there, but it was a little long for my liking. The sinker goes on the bottom here. And this is up top, and you hook your line right there, and you have to have at least a knot worth of drift. You know, and then I'm just holding the thing on the bottom. The real trick is making sure you're on the bottom. I watch so many people, the thing is skating up off the bottom, you know, and they're 100 yards out and the line's barely touching the water. You know, they don't have enough lead on. So you gotta either let the line out till the weight, you feel the weight hit the bottom, and then lock it up and wait for that bite. And then every, every once in a while, jig it up, see if you hit bottom, if you don't, you gotta let out line. So it's, Always got to have it on the bottom. And uh, this thing, it'll start to flutter. You can watch the tip. The tip's moving real fast, and all of a sudden it stops. And you feel the drag on it and set the hook. I think the last time I used this one in, uh, in a good drift, I had eight keepers. And I, I just switched to it towards the end of the day, the last hour. And the last hour I had eight keepers. Um, any questions? Henry, Henry. This one here, it's the uh, Tsunami. Yeah, Tsunami. I had one the next size up from this and I was black fishing and uh, <clears throat> set it real hard and snapped the pole. <laughs> yeah. That's Henry. Lot, that's a lot lighter than the one I got. Yeah, it is. It's a little lighter. But I've caught ten pound, a 10-pound uh, blackfish with this. Henry. Yes, sir. You caught a 15-pound fluke. Okay. Other than you, I don't know that anybody sitting here can say they caught one. Okay. How'd you catch it? I was 12 years old. Luck. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could definitely say wow. I know it caught 15 pounds. Should have picked you up. <laughs> Is that 15? That's a six pound pole. This was my favorite pole. Wow, my God. Okay. Yeah, oh, geez. This was. I believe so. This was a wedding gift to my father when he got married in 58. What an appropriate wedding gift. I caught so many fish with this, everything from fluke to bass. Every 50, 60 pound bass I ever caught practically was on this pole. With that reel, a damn quick. You know, it doesn't have much drag, but you know, you get. What's that? Damn quick. No, it's a quick. Damn quick. Damn, yes. You never heard of it. Oh, German made. Great fishing pole. Great reel. Anyway, I had, was, we were jigging for fluke. You know, bait fish back then in the rocks off of 13 in uh, Huntington Harbor, right off of Eaton's Neck, using the old style rigs. You're dragging them on the bottom. And we were just, my uncle was losing rigs left and right. So uh, I just read an article in The Fisherman that said if you want to catch big fish, you have to use big bait or big lures. So I go down to the cabin, he was at 32 foot lures and he had tackle boxes everywhere. So I'm digging through the tackle boxes and I find an eight ounce uh, crocodile, hammer finish, something like this. Oh, the blue fish used to love those. Okay, the hammer finish. And so I walk out and I hook it onto the, the fishing pole and my uncle looks at me and says, you're gonna lose that in the rocks in a heartbeat. That thing cost me $3. This was 1978, remember, okay? Yeah, that was a lot of money, right? For a fishing lure. Yeah, right. <laughs> For a fishing lure, that was a lot of money. Nobody spent that kind of money on a fishing lure, you know? So I drop it over the side and I'm jigging and I'm bouncing it up and down with this pole. And all of a sudden it gets stuck. 
and he goes, I told you, I told you, you're going to lose it. And then all of a sudden, like Pandy says, oh, it just starts taking line. So I scream the line out and I'm holding on for dear life. Remember, I'm 12 years old. I'm like this tall. And uh, he jumps up. Oh, my God, you got a whale or something. Holy crap. What the hell? Gav grabs the net. I fight it to the back of the boat and it rolls over the white belly. I almost dropped the pole. It scared the hell out of me. It was so big. I couldn't believe that I had caught something like that. And I, I backed up like this, barely holding on to the pole. He says, don't do that. Get over here. And scoops it up, holds it up. And it damp it, I could swear it was as big as me. He was, he yeah. Right? Most aren't that nope. He barely got it in the net. Yeah, you get it barely in the net. Right. Like, it, was it was a fluke. Freaking huge. So... After that, he wanted to go fluke fishing every day, <laughs> right? So he goes out like, fish my life right? He goes out like, <laughs> we go out like two days later with his brother at the controls, and he's using the hook and uh, hooks into one, gets it up right off the back of the boat, and we're about to hit buoy 13, and he yells at his brother to nudge it ahead so we don't hit the buoy, and he guns it, and the prop wash knocked the fish right off the hook. No! I swear my uncle didn't talk to my, my, my other uncle for a month. <laughs> Just unbelievable. And then uh, I think the next weekend we went out and I promptly lost it in the rocks. So he was right. Are you using it anymore? <laughs> this? Yes. I, oh, that was gone, but you know, you can't find the real good ones anymore. I got them in the closet. Yeah, right? I plan on jigging it. I was, I was jigging it uh, the Nantucket Shoals because I wasn't afraid of losing it. You know, but I didn't catch anything. Right in the end, you don't have a dropper loose? I had, I had. put down the sinker first and have that Nope, nope. Tied right directly onto, actually it was tied to a 12-inch uh, wire leader. In case the bluefish were around, you know, and for whatever reason, it, it didn't on the wire leader. Yep. And you're only 12 years old. Yes. Yeah, exactly. That was crazy. Sometimes it does. Yes. Any questions? Unbelievable. I love it. <laughs> yeah, that's let's a go great home. story. <laughs>